guys, Mike from Missouri. Right here is my 12 by 30 Hindi that I've done a video series on. And I've gotten a few uh, questions on some of the lubrication points and what to use, how to drain the fluids. So I'm gonna go through some of those today because I think it'll be valuable for the uh, Hindi community. Now I'm not an expert when it comes to what lubrication to use for this machine because a lot of that back when they recommended those lubricants, um, you probably can't get that exact stuff, but I'm gonna share what I use because I haven't had any problems. But uh, just keep in mind that there may be uh, better uh, fluids to use than what I'm using, but this is just what's working for me. So let me grab the camera here. All right, well, let's start with the main headstock area. The headstock has a front bearing reservoir, the main gear change area reservoir, and the rear bearing reservoir. I run an ISO 46 hydraulic transmission fluid in these reservoirs, so it's called like a HITRAN. You can get it at a Tractor Supply or any farm store. But there are drains for each one of these. This one, this reservoir, it is up under here, right there where that pick is, and it will drain this reservoir. The fill for this reservoir is right here. And as you can see, this one is right in the center. The reservoir in the center, which lubricates this whole large area up top, the drain for it is actually in the rear right there and it is filled through this cap this one's stuck probably with paint and lastly for the headstock the drain right here and the fill for the rear bearing and i do know that this particular reservoir needs to have this I think that's the vent. So this vent area needs to be cleaned for that to show properly on this height there. So that is the main lubrication points for the spindle and the gear change area. There are, of course, other areas. Um, and I'm gonna do the reservoir areas first before I get into some of the smaller lubrication points. This um, quick change mechanism area and mine is low there's the pump here and I believe it drains by loosening the pump uh, and it fills through just the cavity right here so if yours is not an 18 speed it will not have this reservoir and I have an example of a 12 speed right here that does not have it. This is all manually lubricated. This one's pressure lubricated. If you remove that pump, there will be a fine screen mesh filter around it. Um, and that sometimes can get restricted. <clears throat> you can see if this pump is working by engaging the lead screw drive assembly and running the machine and making sure the lead screw is turning and you see that little copper tube with the oil drip off of it it should drip oil into that little galley with the hole in it right underneath it fairly consistently and that's going to ensure that the pump that's mounted up under here is functioning moving on to the apron there is a drain right there it's hard to see and your fill right here you have to rotate it to expose the hole and then you can fill it now this this will continue to uh, drop and um, level as you use the machine because as you move this back and forth there is a cam in here that acts on the pump and it pumps fluid up through some of these channels 
and lubricates the front and rear ways. It also has a channel to lubricate the cross slide. One thing you should check, because it's common on these machines when they get old, the stuff can get plugged up. Run it back and forth, and you should see a film of oil such as that on the ways front and back. If that's not happening, um, you can take these plugs out and see if you get oil coming up through there. It actually will overflow. There's some um, orifices in here that are at a set height that controls where the oil needs to go. But uh, if you take those out, you can see the oil pumping. And maybe I'll do that here after a bit. Okay, I used a straight screwdriver, remove the plug right here. Down in there is like a jet, kind of like a carburetor jet. It's at a set height. And uh, when you crank the apron back and forth, and if you watch carefully, you can see that start to fill up with the oil. Takes a little bit of time, run it back and forth. You can see that oil is starting to overflow and go into that orifice. Kind of hard to see. Oh, there you can see a bubble going in. See that oil is rising up and flowing in. Now, if you don't get oil in here, there's some passages to, let's back you out here. You can clean out in this area. It's, you can try to trace where they go, but there are some passages along the center here that go out on each end. And like I said, you should be getting a film of oil on the, on the ways when you go back and forth. It's not a ton but it is there. Now, the one thing I did forget to mention in the apron, you should use a, a light whey oil instead of the high tran oil. It is uh, made for the ways of the machine. Full disclosure, I use the high tran in the apron and I've not had any issue. I know that it is not the preferred oil. However, no oil is worse than some oil or the wrong oil. But to do it properly, you should be using whey oil in the apron. I think that high tran hydraulic oil is perfectly fine for the rest of this machine. It's used in automotive transfer cases and automotive manual transmissions. It is very similar to an automotive manual transmission. Um, probably have seen this in other videos. Hendy had three different kind of spindle bearings and you can tell which one yours has by looking at an imprint. It's hard to tell, but this one says TRB for tapered roller bearing. You may also see PB for plane bearings, which are not anti-friction bearings, meaning they do not have ball bearings. It's like a rod bearing. You know, it's technically metal on metal, but they're still very good. Um, and also BB, ball bearing, which is what this 12-speed machine has, BB, right? there. Uh, one of the most important areas to lubricate these machines is under this cover. There's a Gitz coupler or Gitz cup right there. 
flip this up. And that is oiling the uh, main clutch. I'm trying to think of this like a slipping when you shift it in and out. Right here. Kind of like the shift fork on a manual transmission. You don't want to wear that, run that dry and wear that out. I do not believe replacement parts exist for that anymore. On the 12 speed, a similar mechanism. It's under here though. And it's basically exactly the same. Now there's several areas that need to be uh, lubricated that are like one shot, not one shot, but if you want to do it every time you use it or once a week or something. Um, some of those are behind closed areas. Um, one being right there where the light is shining on. Let's see if I can get a right there. That lubricates these gears. There's um, one right here. I'm trying to remember. That lubricates that sliding mechanism that disengages and disengages the lead screw feed. Uh, let's see, we have, I think that is it in here. We have one here, and I believe this one goes down to the uh, reversing mechanism in the bottom of the headstock. There's two others here and I really, before I made this video, should, should have remembered where those go. This one's missing a, a Gitz coupler or cup. I'll see if I can do some research and see what those are lubricating exactly, but those would, you would give it a shot or two of, um, lubricant you know once a week or more before you go putting this together if you're working on one of these i found some uh, issues with the uh, oiling ports being restricted this oil cap feeds this front bearing through this little hole under there so make sure that's clean and not restricted this hole um, a Gitz oil cup screws into it and it lubricates this um, upper bevel spur gear. And the last one, there's an oil cup that goes in there, has a copper pipe that goes to the oiler that comes in through the center of that shaft. And I'll show you that. It'll make more sense when I get it installed. So, Okay, then you have several. So that's an oiling hole. Some may, machines may have it on here, you know, and that lubricates the uh, rotation of that uh, shaft. There, there's one under here. There's another one back here. Some machines will have one here. Some machines will have them here. And I can give you some examples on this other machine. You got the obvious ones here and there. Let me go to a 12 speed machine. So, like I said, this machine has them in here, here, there, there, where that machine doesn't have as many of the uh, single point lubrication areas. On the non pressure lubricated gear change, you got several more areas to lubricate. Again, this is a 12 speed machine. On these three oil reservoirs, front bearing, main shifting gear area, and rear bearing, you should not have to add oil to it. Unless the machine has a leak somewhere, you really don't need to be adding oil to it. Now, if you drain them and change the oil, obviously you're gonna have to oil, add oil 
those locations. But that's different from the apron, which is going to use oil as it's pumping it to the ways. This is you're going to have to periodically fill. Same with this. I do not believe you're going to have to frequently add any oil to it. Um, it is a little more exposed and open than the uh, other reservoirs and mine tends to drip out a little bit so I've had to add some to it but unlike you know these other cups you know this cup is different than this this goes to a reservoir this is like a one time you oil it periodically and you do that somewhat frequently as you're using the machine. And you're gonna do that with any of the oiling areas other than these three, well, I should say four, that one and the three up there, you're gonna fill one time, keep an eye on it unless they're leaking. The apron, you're gonna to have to consistently fill it and the rest of the oiling areas, you're gonna do it periodically um, I do mine almost every time I use the machine, so just thought I would add that in. Well, I hope you found that information useful. As you know, these machines or machines like these aren't being made anymore. So as much as I can help you to get yours going, it makes me feel like I'm fulfilling a good deed. So I'm happy to help. If you have any questions or comments, please put them down in the comments below and I'll do my best to help you out. Thanks and have a good day.